This is the second of three videos on section 4.2. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the first derivative test. So we can use the first derivative to figure out whether when we have a critical point, in this case, we have points where the slope is zero. So at this point C, we've got a horizontal tangent line. And at this point C over here, we've got another horizontal tangent line. So what we want to do is use the first derivative and the way the first derivative is changing at those critical points to figure out whether we have a local maximum or local minimum value. So in the picture on the left, to the left of our critical point, my slope is negative. If I were to draw tangent lines over here, they would all have negative slopes. And to the right of that critical point, the slope is positive. If I were to draw tangent lines, they would have positive slope. So because the slope is changing from negative to positive, my function was going down, and then it started going back up, what I have here is a local minimum. On the other hand, if my slope changes from positive to negative, here on the picture on the right, that means that I have a local maximum. My function was going up and then it started going down. So I reached a maximum point. So that's exactly what the first derivative test says. It says if you've got a continuous function, so no jumps or breaks, no weird behavior, and you have a critical point, then if your derivative changes sign from positive to negative, again, that means my function was going up and then it started going down, then what you're gonna have is gonna be a local max. If your sign of your derivative changes from negative to positive, that means your function was going down and then it started going back up, what you're gonna have here is gonna be a local min. Now, if your sign of your derivative doesn't change, then you have neither a local max nor a local min. That would be a kind of situation where your function was going up, it leveled out, and then it had a horizontal tangent line, but then it kept going up. Or the function was going down, it stopped, it leveled out, and then it kept going down. Again, that would be neither a max nor a min. Okay, so let's just talk about this in a little bit more detail. So again, first derivative test says, if your derivative sign changes from positive to negative, then f has a local maximum. So again, that means my slope was positive, then the slope was zero or undefined, and then after that, the slope was negative. My function was going up, then it was going down, local max. Instead, if my slope changes from negative, and then it's zero at the critical point, and then the slope is positive, my function was going down, then it started going back up, that's gonna be a local minimum. And again, if the slope doesn't change sign, then f has neither a local max nor a local min. This is an example of how that could happen, where again, at this point in the middle here, I've got a critical point, I've got a horizontal tangent line, but to the left of this critical point, my slope is positive, and to the right of that critical point, my slope is positive. So that's neither a max nor a min. Now, how do we do this in practice? So let's actually do an example or two here. So we wanna use the first derivative test to find the local maximum and minimum values of this function. So our first step is going to be to find the critical points. Because those are the places where we potentially have a max or a min. Remember those critical points are places where my derivative, which in this case is two X minus four, where my derivative is zero or undefined. That's a polynomial, 2x minus 4 is a polynomial, so that's never undefined, so we're just going to set it equal to 0 and solve. Add 4 to both sides, divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 2. So in this case, we only have the one critical point. Now the second thing we need to do is we need to test the critical point. And if we've got multiple critical points, then we have to test them all. And for the first derivative test, the way we're going to test them is by drawing a number line. We were doing this before. So I draw a number line, I put all of the critical points I found on that number line. In this case, I just have the one. And then what I'm looking for is what's happening to my slope at that point. I know that at x equals two, my slope is zero. What I wanna know is what's the slope to the left of that critical point? What's the slope to the right of that critical point? Is the slope changing from positive to negative? Is it changing from negative to positive? Or is the sign of the slope not changing at all? So just like we were doing before, I'm gonna choose a number less than two. It can be any number less than two. I'm gonna choose zero, because zero is usually pretty easy to plug into stuff. So f prime of zero here is going to be two times zero minus four. Make sure that you're plugging into the derivative, not into the original function. Because again, what I wanna know is what's happening to the slope. So the slope here is negative four. And again, all I really care about that negative four is that it's negative. 
so I put little minus signs on my number line. Now I choose a number that's greater than 2. Can, again, be any number greater than 2. How about 10? So what's f prime of 10? And again, I'm plugging into the derivative, not into the original function. So I'm going to get 2 times 10 minus 4. That's 20 minus 4. That's 16. And again, all I really care about that number 16 is that it's positive, so I put little plus signs. And now my third step is to draw conclusions. What did I learn from doing all that testing? Well, I learned that at x equals 2, my slope changed from negative to positive. That means my original function f was going down and then started going back up. That means that I've got a local minimum. So local minimum at x equals 2. Now, sometimes they'll actually ask you for the, uh, the points, right? So the, uh, the x and y values. If you needed a y value, you would plug back into the original function. So again, the plugging into the derivative tells me about slopes. Plugging into the original function tells me about y values. So if I want the local maximum point, that, or sorry, local minimum point here, if that's something that I wanted, that would be 2 comma f of 2. And so I would take this number 2 and plug it into my original function f back up here. But if they don't ask for that, then you don't need to do that. All right, let's do another one. This one a little bit more complicated, but same basic process. So first step, find the critical points. So we're going to take the derivative. 2x to the fifth, the derivative there is going to be 10x to the fourth. 5x to the fourth, the derivative is going to be 20x to the third. 10x cubed, that's going to be 30x squared. And the derivative of 4 is 0. That's a polynomial. It's never undefined, so we're just going to set it equal to 0 and solve. Now, that looks a little nasty, but it's a polynomial, so we're going to try to factor it. I can factor out a 10, and I can also factor out an x squared. So when I do that, I get x squared minus 2x minus 3. And then I can further factor x squared minus 2x minus 3. That's going to be x uh, minus 3 and x plus 1. And then I've still got my 10x squared. So the reason why we're factoring is that now we know that one of these factors must equal 0. So either 10x squared has to equal 0, or x minus 3 has to equal 0, or x plus 1 has to equal 0. 10x squared equals 0, that gives me x equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0, that gives me x equals 3. And x plus 1 equals 0, that gives me x equals negative 1. So I've got three critical points, and I've got to test them all. So test the critical points. What does testing the critical points look like? It looks like drawing a number line, putting my critical points that I found on the number line. Make sure that you put them in the order that they would actually show up on the number line. All right, so negative 1 and then 0 and then 3. That's the way the numbers would actually live on the, on the number line. And then what I want to do is in between all of these numbers, I'm going to pick values of x and I'm going to plug those values of x into my f prime because I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen with my f prime function. So let's see, less than negative 1, how about negative 2? So f prime of negative 2, that's going to be 10 times negative 2 to the fourth, minus 2 times negative 2 to the third, minus 30 times negative 2 squared. And so I'm just going to plug all that into my calculator. And when I do that, I get positive 200. And again, all that really matters about that positive 200 is that it's positive, so I put a plus sign here. I know that my derivative is 0 at each of these three points. The question is what's happening in between. Now, I'm using the table function on my calculator to make this a little bit easier so I don't have to type in all these exponents every time. So I'm going to choose a number between negative 1 and 0. So that's going to be f of, let's say, negative 0.5. Again, you can pick any number in between negative 1 and 0, but that's the one I chose. And I get negative 4.375 off of my calculator. And again, all that really matters is that that number is negative. Between 0 and 3, I'm going to choose f, of, uh, f prime of 1. And when I plug 1 into my derivative, again, I'm plugging into this function here, uh, I get negative 40. So again, all that really matters is that that's negative. And then greater than 3, I chose 5. So f prime of 5, again, plugging 5 into my derivative formula, I get 3,000. And all that really matters there is that that's positive. Okay, so what can I conclude from this? Again, step 3 here is draw conclusions. You've done all this testing, you've done all this computations, what do they tell you? What do you now know? Well, at negative 1, f 
goes from increasing to decreasing. My function was going up and then it started going down. So I've got a local max at x equals negative one. At zero, my function goes from decreasing, my function f goes from decreasing to decreasing. That means it was going down, it leveled out, and then it kept going down. That means I've got a neither uh, a max nor a min at x equals zero. And then at x equals three, my function goes from decreasing to increasing. It was going down and then it started going back up. That's gonna be a local min at x equals three. So that's the basic idea. So take a look at these, follow this outline, follow this process and should be good to go. I'll see you here for the third video in this series on section 4.2 in just a little bit.